Are you a mindless eater or a comfort eater or even both? A recent survey found that over 50% of us are eating more snacks than usual. And on top of this, almost 50% of us reported eating when bored and 25% are out of control with their eating habits. We're not alone when it comes to experiencing changes in our food choices and eating habits during this pandemic. But the good news is there are effective strategies that we can learn to help us take back control of our poor eating habits. And by developing these habits, we can prevent overeating, obesity and chronic illnesses like high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes. Hi, my name is Diane. Welcome to Trilogy Life Coaching. Today I want to share with you my personal journey to healthier eating habits and weight loss. After completing my first health and wellness course in 2015, I realised that the end of the course was in fact only the beginning of my journey to health, wealth and happiness. I discovered that there were many more essential ingredients that I needed to maintain a healthy weight and a happy lifestyle. In last week's video, we identified some of the reasons behind emotional or comfort eating. And we discussed some of the steps we can take to be more aware of our own emotional eating habits. You can find that video here if you would like to learn more. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into what we mean by mindful or intuitive eating. And I'm going to share with you my seven top tips to help you develop more mindful or intuitive way for, to eat for optimum health. So what does the term mindful or intuitive eating actually mean? Mindful or intuitive eating can be an important tool to help us become more aware of what we're eating and how much we're eating and why we're eating it. Many of us are focused on something else when we eat so the act of eating is done on autopilot. It's estimated that on average, we spend two and a half hours a day eating. However, for more than half that time, we're doing something else like working, driving, reading, watching TV, or fiddling with an electronic device. Therefore, we're not fully aware of what we're eating. It's this type of mindless eating a lack of awareness of the food we're consuming that may be contributing to the obesity epidemic and other health issues that we are currently experiencing worldwide. So what exactly is mindfulness? Mindfulness means focusing on the present moment. The goal of mindfulness in general is to practice paying attention to one single thing, which is the complete opposite of multitasking. In essence, mindful or intuitive eating means being fully attentive to your food as you buy, prepare and serve and consume it. So now we set the scene, here's the first of my top tips to help you create new mindful or intuitive eating habits. Number one, learn your body's physical hunger signals. When you feel hungry, are you responding to an emotional stress or responding to your body's physical needs. Instead of just eating when we get emotional signals such as stress or sadness or frustration, loneliness or even boredom, we should start to listen more carefully to our bodies and ask questions such as, is my stomach growling? Is my energy low? Am I feeling a little lightheaded? Too often we eat without when our minds tell us to, rather than listening to our bodies. True mindful eating is actually listening deeply to our body signals for hunger and choosing only to eat when your body is telling you it's hungry. When I was trying to develop this as a new way of eating, I found it helpful to write down the answers to these two questions. What are my body's physical hunger signals? Growling in my stomach? lightheadedness, low energy, and what are my emotional hunger triggers? 
Am I feeling stressed because of work or family issues, moving home, financial issues, or just feeling bored? By writing it down, you will clearly be able to see and note the differences. I can guarantee that if you try this exercise for yourself, you'll find it enlightening. Once you start to recognise that you're reaching for food for emotional reasons, then you can begin to think about an action you could take to help prevent that. Here are some strategies I still use. If I'm bored at home and get the urge to visit the kitchen, then I'll listen to a podcast so my mind has something else to focus on. I find this one very effective in the evenings, so give it a go. If I'm feeling upset after having a row with a loved one, I get a craving for chocolate, and then I'll sit down and do a Sudoku or a jigsaw puzzle. Why don't you give that one a go and see if it works? If I've had an awful day and feel overwhelmed with all that's going on in my life, then I'll call a friend for a chat. I find this one helps me a lot because by the time I come off the phone, my emotions have started to calm down and the craving for the comfort food is in decline. Tip number two is to cultivate a mindful kitchen. Do you sometimes find yourself eating alone and randomly rather than eating with others at a set time and in a set place. We often eat mindlessly rather than carefully planning out our meals and our snacks. To help with that, it's important to try and cultivate what I call a mindful kitchen. To do this, I found it helpful to begin with my shopping list. So consider the health value of every item you add to your shopping list and then stick to it to avoid impulse buying. Aim to fill your trolley in the fresh food aisle and avoid the centre aisles, which are heavy with processed foods. And avoid the crisps and chocolate that are placed strategically near the checkouts. Of course, we all love to snack, but carefully planning out your food so that you eat at consistent times and in the right place will boost both your mental and your physical health. And who doesn't want that? So tip number three is to think about distracted eating versus just eating. An important step towards mindful or intuitive eating is to remove distractions at mealtimes. If you're preoccupied with the TV, your mobile phone, driving to or from work, it's difficult to focus on just eating. And this often leads us to eating more than our body actually needs. Ideally, try to eat at the table away from your other distractions. Multitasking and eating is a recipe for not being able to listen deeply to our body's needs and wants. We've all had the experience of going to the cinema with our bag full of popcorn. And before the adverts are over, we're asking who ate all of my popcorn? So with your next meal, try single tasking. Just eat, no screens or distractions. And doing at least some of these things will help you to become more mindful of which foods you are putting into your body and when and where and how you eat. Tip number four is connect more deeply with your food. Now what this means is we should try to consider where food comes from rather than just thinking of food as an end product. We've all become ever more disconnected from our food in recent years. Many of us don't even consider where a meal comes from beyond the supermarket packaging. This is a loss because eating offers an incredible opportunity to connect us more deeply to the natural world and to each other. When you actually pause to consider all of the people involved in the meal that has arrived on your plate, it's hard not to feel both grateful and interconnected. You could also reflect on the cultural traditions that brought you this food. The recipes generously shared from friends and family who brought them from distant place and time to be handed down. With just a little more mindful list like this, we may begin to make wiser choices about sustainability and health in our food, not just for ourselves, but for the whole planet and for generations to come. So tip number five, is engage your senses when you eat. Come to the table with an appetite, not when you're ravenously hungry. 
If you skip meals, you may be so eager to get anything in your stomach that your first priority is filling that void instead of enjoying your food. And when cooking, serving and eating your food, be attentive to colour, texture and aroma. So tip number six is let your body catch up with your brain. If you slow down when you're eating, you can give your body a chance to catch up with your brain and to hear the signals to eat the right amount, helping you to stop once you're full. I've struggled with this my whole life and rarely did I ever leave anything on my plate. But since building these mindful eating habits into my life, I now regularly leave some food on my plate when I recognise that my body is telling me it's full. The 2020-20 strategy is a helpful tool to increase mindfulness around food and to learn to eat intuitively. At each meal, chew each mouthful of food for 20 seconds. Put your fork and your knife down for 20 seconds between each mouthful and take 20 minutes to eat your meal. Concentrate entirely on your food and you'll likely find that you need to eat less as you become more in tune with your body's hunger signals and aware of what you're eating. So tip number seven is to understand your own motivations. Do you often eat foods that are emotionally comforting rather than eating foods that are nutritionally healthy? This was definitely one of my biggest struggles. I, if I was happy or sad or upset, I would eat for comfort. It's a tricky balance, but it is possible to find nourishing foods that are also satisfying and comforting. Trust me, I found them. As we practice eating healthier foods and a greater variety of foods, we're going to be less inclined to binge on our comfort foods and we'll learn to enjoy healthy foods more often. Generally, strict rules around food tend to have the opposite effect of making us crave the foods even more, causing feelings of guilt and shame if we break one of these rules. Try to have a more balanced viewpoint, such as I'll only have chocolate when I truly feel like it, and then allow yourself to enjoy the chocolate when you want it and move on afterwards. At the end of the day, every one of us will have different triggers for emotional eating. Likewise, we need an individualised approach when it comes to feeling in control of how we handle our emotions around food and health. My Trilogy One-to-One -one Transformation Programme will teach you to mindfully enjoy food, intuitively eat without counting calories or fixating on your weight. There is so much more to health than just the food that you put into your mouth. And that's why my programme focuses on your mindset transformation, how to reduce and manage your stress, how to improve your sleep, and how to find an exercise that you love, as well as giving you sound nutritional advice. You can find the link in the show notes if you would like to know more about working with me one-on-one. -on -one. So what are our key learning points from today? In the current environment, many of us are feeling like we've lost control of our food intake. Mindful or intuitive eating is a useful strategy to help us feel more in control of our food choices. And eating mindfully involves becoming more aware of what we're eating, how much we're eating and why we're eating it. It also means paying closer attention to the process of choosing, preparing and eating our meals. And we also need to remove distractions when we're eating and engage all of our senses. So in this week's challenge, let me know in the comments what strategies you're going to try to work on in the coming month. Set yourself up for progress by choosing one or two strategies to get you started. And remember, it's about progress, baby steps, not perfection. And that's the way forward to make lasting changes on your road to eating more intuitively. Also, feel free to ask me questions down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Wishing you all success on this week's journey to health, wealth and happiness.